Let's finish off uh, chapter 16 and all of this acid base stuff. Uh, last thing we really need to look at here is tying in our acid base strength to the equilibrium law expressions. Or in other words, take everything we've learned about Bronsted Lowry acid base, figuring out that proton transfer, making the balanced equation, and now applying ice tables and equilibrium law. So really we're just getting into the math of it now. A couple things I need you guys to remember. All right, this was uh, brought up earlier uh, in the lessons and also in Chemistry 20. But for a strong acid, we get to use this little equality here. That if I take any of my six strong acids, whatever concentration I brew to those particular six strong acids to, like for example, if it is a one mole per liter hydrochloric acid solution, like I see here, then I can assume because it reacts quantitatively, my hydronium ion concentration afterwards will be the exact same concentration. This is an easy one. This is a nice one that we can use when we're trying to figure out uh, certain um, calculations when dealing with it. Uh, it was really important in that percent ionization stuff that we ignored. Most of this stuff we're going to be looking at uh, here is to deal with our weak acids, which um, uh, of course do not react completely with water, or they do not ionize completely with the other species around them, and therefore we only get partial reactions in equilibrium. And for partial reactions in equilibrium, we start using K values. So we've already looked at Kc in chapter 15 for, you know, just anything that has a variable concentration. We looked at Kw at the beginning of chapter 16, looking for water's equilibrium. Now we're going to take a look at acid uh, equilibriums, or Ka's, and we'll take a look at base ones, or Kb's. So when we're talking about trying to quantify, uh, quantify some of these things, uh, a lot of it was done based upon percentage ionization. But again, since we are you know, trying to get through a lot of material uh, at home, what we've done is we've kind of ignored this idea. But just remember that percent ionization is something you did in chapter 15 as percent reaction. What we're going to concentrate on here is using or calculating the K values for certain acid-base systems based upon the information that we have and the ice tables that we can develop. Okay, so let's move into Ka. Ka is really just your equilibrium constant or equilibrium law again, but now it is done for your acids. So we will see on our data table that we do have Ka values listed with our acids and bases. The bigger the Ka value, the stronger or more ionized the acid becomes. When you take a look at the six strong acids on your table, you'll notice that it just gives a K value that says very large. Okay, that just means you're dealing with a quantitative situation. Some tables, this was a diploma exam issue, would switch this up and give you percent ionization, but of course, since we have removed that concept here from chapter 16, we will ignore it. So, there are two types of calculations that you guys want to be proficient with uh, when we get through this. One, where the pH or H3O concentration is given. These are kind of like the nice, easy ones. All right, the ones where we have to calculate it usually involve something along the lines of an ice table and maybe some shortcuts to avoid the quadratic like we saw in chapter 15. All right, so they just become a little bit more challenging. Let's get right into the examples because that's ultimately how best we're going to learn this material. And so we'll see if we can't get through the first one here, uh, before my 10 minute time limit on these little videos runs out. All right, so you can see that we're trying to calculate the pH of a 0.1 molar phosphoric acid solution. Or sorry, we're told that it is 1.70. So we have the concentration of the weak acid and we have the pH. What we want to do first is come up with a Bronsted-Lowry equation for this uh, particular uh, equilibrium and then we're going to build an ice table to help determine hydronium uh, from the pH. All right, so let's uh, dive right into this one here. We'll start with our entities. Now you don't have an awful lot of solutions here, so the entities are pretty straightforward. You have the weak acid of phosphoric acid. And you have the water that you've dissolved it into to make your solution. 
All right, so really just the two entities in our uh, water solution. We now need to go through our table and we need to find all of the potential acids and bases. All right, so we start on our table. It's not one of the six strong. And so we're looking for phosphoric acid. There it is. It is a potential acid. I already know that water is a potential acid or base because it's on both sides of the table. And I just confirm that as I look at the rest of the table, I don't see phosphoric acid anywhere on the basic side, which I didn't really expect to see. All right, so we have that. And when we take a look at what we have for strong or weak, all right, obviously water has to be my strongest base, the proton acceptor. And when we look at the height of water and phosphoric acid, the phosphoric acid is the higher of the two. So we get our strong acid and we get our strong base. So this gives us our proton transfer that we can use. We have in our equation here, phosphoric acid reacting with water in an ionization equilibrium. All right, where I can see that my proton has to go from the acid to the base. So I would make the dihydrogen phosphate ion and some hydronium. Okay, now we can start building an ice table to start solving our problem here. So as we take a look at the information that we had in the question, all right, we were told that our initial concentration of my phosphoric acid solution was 0 0.10 moles per liter. Water is a liquid, so it's a non-variable uh, concentration. And we would assume that to start with, we have zero hydronium and dihydrogen phosphate ions. We do get one piece of information that helps us. We know that the pH of the solution is 1.7. Remember that for weak acids, the hydronium concentration will always be less than the initial concentration of your acid solution. This is because it does not react completely. This will happen for any acid in an equilibrium system. So the pH is different than what we might calculate for a 0.1 molar pure acid solution. So we've got that, and if we think about the information that we have learned, pH here is equal to 1.70. That would be the pH of the solution at equilibrium. Well, what does that help me out with? The only thing it really gets me is an equilibrium concentration for hydronium. I just have to convert it. So all of those uh, review questions that we had looked at in 16.1, converting back and forth between pH, pOH, and all the other stuff, all right, allows us to use this pH value and find the hydronium concentration. Remember, hydronium concentration is just base 10 raised to the power of the negative pH. So this is 10 raised to the power of negative 1.70, two sig digs. We wouldn't round early here anyway. And when you run that through, you get a concentration of 0 0.01999. How many nines are there? Yeah, <laughs> five moles per liter. All right, so we now learned that this increased by that amount. All right, so we can infer the change. And if you remember from previous ice tables, it is the change category, the delta category here, that gives us our stoichiometric pathway. Now we can show the stoichiometry here, but you might realize that in a single proton transfer, like we see with Bronsted-Lowry, the balanced equation is just one to one to one to one. So do concentrations change greatly when we take a look at this in a one to one ratio? No, they don't. So, so long as you tell me somewhere, you know, because one to one ratio, I can still see here that my increase for my dihydrogen phosphate ion concentration would be the same as hydronium, giving me this. 
and I would see that same decrease over here, giving me a new value at equilibrium 0 0.08 005. Okay, so these types of questions in which we're given pH, pOH, hydronium or hydroxide ion concentrations generally allow us to complete the ice table without any issues of solving for x. These are the easier ones for us. We like these ones better. All right, so we now have the equilibrium concentrations. There's one last thing that we had to do here and we wanted to calculate the Ka value for this particular um, weak acid solution. And so we do our equilibrium law expression. Now remember, equilibrium law, I expect you guys to sort of build this one first from the equation so we put the right things in. It's the concentration of your products. Over the concentration of any reactants that have a variable concentration. Water was ignored there. It would be ignored in our Ka. So now we just need to put in our numbers. Everything was a one to one to one ratio, so we don't have any exponents here to deal with. And so it just becomes 0 0.01995 two times. So I'm just going to simplify with the square here all over 0 0.08005. And we get something like that. Finish calculating, and Ka here will be 0 0.004972, I believe. All right, and so we had a two-digit limit. When we take a look at our initial concentration, and we take a look at the sig digs found in our pH. So initial concentration, and then your pH. Both of those are two significant digits, so we just need to round this one. So I'll put it into scientific notation. All right, by moving my decimal behind the first significant digit, and then 4.9 would round up to 5.0 when the 7 is dropped, and so 5.0 times 10 to the negative 3 is my Ka value for this particular acid. All right, there's your first solution. We'll get through a couple more examples here in the next video.